It's designed specifically for sampling and it can press one key at a time, but it can do it better than anything else in the world, including real people. We tried recording some of those uh, pianos through their uh, native systems and uh, to me it seems like uh, they stopped their motion control development at a much earlier stage than we did with the piano robot because uh, uh, they had some, some of the same problems that I had uh, in, in the early editions of the robot and they didn't have a sufficient precision for a low velocities when you play really really soft they didn't perform too well. They had the overheating problem and uh, they also were quite rigidly set to play a note and then release it at a specific time. You, can't, you couldn't really control the shape of the stroke. With our robot we can sample velocities with about half a decibel difference and uh, we can have like a hundred velocities going from the highest velocity down to minus 50 decibel. tried a few solutions that are already in the market and some of them perform fairly well um, at a human level but especially if you have very quiet velocities like something like this. The problem is with the re repeatability, you can't really do this uh, over and over again. Every time you play a sequence it sounds different and uh, that's the problem. So we started with a simple electromagnet and uh, I put some code in that allowed it to move up and down and then uh, the whole huge problem of precise control needed to be solved and that's like uh, basically everything that uh, I spend my time on while developing that robot. My part specifically about the piano robot was to ensure that the motion control works properly and uh, there is no overheating or some strange things. Uh, in the earlier versions of the robot we had a butcher mode where the robot would start oscillating spontaneously and just uh, pressing the key like da 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 da. Uh, that, that, that was a problem where the motion control system would uh, go out of stability region and then, then that, that would happen. Uh, then uh, another problem was uh, physical stability of the entire system and uh, making uh, the, the rig for this robot uh, out of very heavy bricks that, that kept it in one place and uh, apparently that solved uh, some of the other issues with, with stability and we could really get uh, the maximum force. On and off, I think, uh, actually took a couple of years uh, from, from the very beginning till, till the end. And uh, I don't even remember how I started because uh, the, this thing went through so many different iterations, so many things were tried. Uh, I even had a finger made out of silicone somewhere that, that was like a human finger, but ultimately that was a little bit difficult to control it in relation to the height because uh, how, how do you measure the height with a finger because uh, um, it has a certain curvature so in, in the end we replaced it with a, with a flat felt surface that were just, just as well. Ultimately the main thing is what's the end result can you actually hear the difference between sampling with your finger or sampling with another system and our piano robot? Yes, you can, because our piano robot does not add anything to the sound. All other systems, they either have a specific character, and if you listen closely, you can hear that, that all keys pressed, they have a specific unnatural character to them or they produce some noises. Our robot is completely quiet and it's fully controllable. You can choose how you want to press the key and it's as close as you can get to complete transparency when sampling a piano.